Let's check out some additional Magic Sheet tools. The first thing I'm gonna do is trigger my snapshot one to give myself uh, full screen access. And I'm gonna add a tab and go into Magic Sheets. And I'm gonna pick the Magic Sheet that we built previously to start to edit. So I'm gonna grab my editor button, click it open. And I'm gonna roll my wheel to zoom out a little bit. The first object we're gonna drop in today is a fader. So I can click on that and drop it in, maybe stretch it out just a little bit more and put it right there. And I wanna assign this to be fader one slash three. And that's going to give me the third fader on page one. So the first number is your fader page number and the second number is your fader number. Because I know that that's an inhibitive sub, I'm gonna go ahead and change my color to be a bit of a dark red. And you can see when I look at that in live, the red is the fill of the fader. And as I move my fader up and down, it's just like I'm moving my physical fader. So we're gonna go back into edit. Another object we can add is a command line. So I'm gonna click on CL drop that in there and I'm just going to have it run across the whole top of my screen. Command lines can be used to follow your user or any other user on the system. So for example, if we had multiple programmers or different devices, I could set this to be user two and that's gonna follow user two's command line. So if there's another programmer on the system, I can see what they're doing. The other thing is I can set that to be my user ID. And if I go into full screen mode, I still have a command line to see what functions are happening. A nice option we have in Magic Sheets is the ability to assign an object to show the pending and current state of any queue list. So I'm gonna come over here real quick to play with this. And I'm just gonna grab a square, Maybe make it a bit bigger. I'm gonna copy it and paste it. And put them side by side. And this one I want to make my target to be Q active. And this one on my left, I wanna make target Q pending. And so that's gonna give us, as you can see, the Q number, labels, notes and scenes that are associated, the fader bar and, and pending time, which is a really nice feature to see on your magic sheet. Right now, because I haven't assigned a target to this, this is just gonna follow whatever is mapped to the master fader pair. So if Q list one is on there and Q list two moves on, uh, those will be assigned here. But if I decide to assign a target, for example, two, then that is going to always point to Q list two. And I'm gonna put two there. And so if I were in a multi queue list environment, I could have these objects pointed at each individual queue list uh, or leave it floating so it could follow whatever's mapped to my master fader pair. Feel free to set these up and use them how they work for you. For today, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those and we'll get back to work over here. The next object I can add is a clock. So I'll grab my clock drop that in there, and that's just going to give me the time of the system. Next, I'm gonna add a couple of fixture symbols to be groups for my side light. So I'm gonna grab all of these objects, and just drag them over here really quick. And then I'm gonna come back over to my fixture library. And instead of dropping them in individually, because I need to put in several, I'm gonna come up to my tools here and you'll see that I get a quick layout tool. And what that will do is it'll allow me to pick up an object and drop in multiple iterations of it. So I'm gonna pick up that fixture. And you'll notice that I get my red done in the bottom right hand side. I'm gonna drop in that fixture. And so I've got four of those now. And I'm gonna hit done and that will prevent me from inserting any more. And the first thing I wanna do is come back up to my cursor and just make it normal so I don't accidentally drop in additional objects. 
One of my groups of fixtures has scrollers on them, so I'm gonna grab that fixture. And you can see in your properties editor, there's a scroller checkbox. And if I select that on a fixture object, I actually get a little scroller object in front of it, and that will actually show me what color is in the scroller at any given time. If I wanna make adjustments to multiple objects at a time, I can grab them all at once. I'm gonna make these be groups because they're gonna to talk to all of the channels. And also, while those are all highlighted, if I rotate them, they'll all rotate together in the same orientation. And finally, if I wanna make them look nice again, I can come up to my alignment tools. I wanna to align them to center. Remember, look at your gold arrows in these graphics, and that will center them up together. And I wanna also distribute them vertically, which will even them out, which is nice. A good little trick is if I didn't want them taking up quite so much space, I can just click off, grab one of my extremes, and move it up. And now when I distribute them vertically, it's going to realign them between the two farthest fixtures. Also, while I have them all selected, I'm going to adjust my fields. So I'm going to make field one be my label to show me what those group labels are. And for today, I want field two to be blank and field three to be blank. Next, I want to auto number them. So I'm going to come up once again, grab my auto numbering tool. I want these to be groups and I want to start them at eight. And when I hit OK, I'm going to click on that to make it group eight, group nine, group 10 and group 11 but I actually want this last fixture to be 12. So I'll click it one more time and it will go to group 12. I'll hit done and that will get me out of my auto numbering. And again, if I look at this fixture, it's now group 12. Let's add a truss object in here. So I'm coming back to my object library, dropping in a truss. I'm gonna rotate it and stretch it a little. I'm going to move that here to represent the truss that these fixtures are on. One of the nice things I can do is make my truss line white. And I can actually take my fill and make it transparent so I can see things through it. But you'll notice that that object is still covering over my fixtures. If I come up to my arrangement tools, I can send that graphical object to the bottom and you'll see that those fixtures are now visually on top of that truss. I'm going to add a few more objects to this magic sheet so that we can use it for programming for our show. The next thing I want to add is our stop effect macro. So I'm going to grab the octagon here, stretch it out, and I want to make that red and I want it to be target of macro one. That's our stop effect macro. And I want to change our first field to be a label. Next, I'm going to drop in a rectangle. Stretch that a little bit bigger. And I'm going to make that orange. And I'm going to make this an effect. We'll do effect 901, which is our circle effect. Again, I want to come down and change my field to just say label. Finally, I'm going to add one more object, stretch it out. I want to make this be effect four. I'll change my field be a label, and I want this to be a bit of a lavender color. Next, I'm going to put in an intensity palette object. So I can grab that intensity palette track select object, put it here in the center where all my groups are. And that's my intensity palette one. I'm going to add a field here to say label so that I know what it's called when this magic sheet is out of the editor. The next thing I want to do is add an object that has a command associated with it. 
Previously, we put in some objects that were console buttons, and we also have something that triggers a macro. But in our property editor area, we can put a command, and that allows us to type a function and have it execute directly from the magic sheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab an object. Let's make this one a triangle. Make it a little bit bigger. And I want the target of this object to be command. And now that it's command target, I can click into my command box and type in what I want. I'm going to say clear, sneak, enter. And now when I fire that command, it's going to put that syntax on my command line. Just for fun, let's go ahead and make that object green. We can also utilize the text field on many of our objects. So we put this command on our green triangle, and we don't necessarily know what it does right now. And because it's not associated with a target, we can't use the label field. So with that still selected, I'm going to come into my text area. So I'm going to go ahead and use the text field and label it CSE, which is my shorthand for clear sneak enter. And I hit enter there. And you can see that that shows up on the triangle. We use the font tiles up here, just like we would on a field. So I can change that size to be a bit bigger. Um, and maybe I want the color to be a dark green. And maybe I want it bold. Great. And when we're all done with that, we're going to close our Magic Sheet Editor so we can use it with our show.